with action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Here's Hoppy now with another new story. This one I call the memory of Mace Malott. It began with a red-headed singer at the Silver Dollar, biggest dance hall and gaming palace in Abilene. California and I had ridden into town looking for Johnny Kenyon, who used to ride for the Bar 20. We had no idea where he was staying, but one of his letters had said something about working at the Silver Dollar. So we stopped there and went inside. Man, oh man. Hey, this place is big enough for a roundup. Yeah, and crowded enough to be a beef shoot. It's going to be worth it, though. Hey, take a look at that red-headed gal sitting up at the bar. Yeah. Prettier than a newborn calf under a harvest moon. And, uh, ooh, ooh, look at them spangles she's wearing. California. Uh, well, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, which way you heading? I thought I'd ask one of the bartenders about Johnny. Well, uh, Hoppy, pick that bald-headed one, then. He's right for the gal. <laughs> uh, I'll bet she sings or something. I'll bet she sings real pretty. Come on, I'll... California, through here. Yeah, I'm right behind... Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. It'd be a lot easier, though, if a fella had a shoehorn. Well, gents, you made it. What'll you have? I'll have a sarsaparilla and a little information. Well, we got both right here. Yep, we got both. What do you want to know? I'm looking for a man named Kenyon, Johnny Kenyon. Know where I can find him? Well, there's your sarsaparilla. Johnny Kenyon, huh? You're a stranger in these parts, ain't you, mister? That's right. Well, uh... Let me handle this, will you, Jack? Uh, oh, why, why, sure, Kelly, why, sure. Just what do you want with Johnny Kenyon, mister? I'm a friend of his, miss. An old friend. That's funny. He never told me about knowing anyone like you. Well, now, maybe that's because he was too busy telling you about yourself. With that red hair of yours... Never mind my red hair. You're a gunman, aren't you? A gunman? (laughs) I'm afraid you're way off the track, miss. You're carrying two guns. You're a stranger. And you come in here asking for Johnny Kenyon. Hoppy, she's got a pistol. A derringer. I see it. Now, miss, why don't you take it easy? I'm not going to hurt Johnny Kenyon. I'm going to make sure you don't hurt him. You or anyone else. First it's threats we get. Now it's a hired gunman. You sound pretty excited to me. If we could just sit down and... You're right. I am excited. Excited enough to kill anyone who'd hurt Johnny Kenyon. And I'm starting right now with you. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and the memory of Mace Malott. Hoppy and California have come to Abilene to look for an old friend, Johnny Kenyon. But in the Silver Dollar dance hall, Hoppy is taken for a hired gunman by a beautiful red-headed entertainer. A girl who thinks he means harm to Johnny Kenyon. She has pulled a gun, leveled it at Hoppy, and fired point blank. Hoppy, you hit! No, blank. California, I'm all right. But there are some bottles back there that are never going to be quite the same. I got the gal's pistol. Give it back to her. Give it back to her? Are you crazy? She won't make any more trouble. She pulled the gun offline just before she fired. I watched her do it. Is that right, miss? I... <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, no, let her go. She must have had good reason for doing what she did. Seems to me Johnny Kenyon must be in some kind of trouble. Well, if he's mixed up with her, he's got trouble. Plenty of it. What's going on here, anyway? Oh, nothing much, Mace. A little shooting, but nothing hurt outside of a few bottles. Were you in on a Cassidy? In a way, I was, but... Uh, wait a minute. How do you happen to know my name? I'm Mace Malak, town marshal. I never forget a face or a fact. I met you in Ponca City seven years ago. Party at Judge Carver's house. You had your arm in a sling from a rifle slug. Well, that is a memory. As I recall it, that was a big party. I'll even name the two waddies you came with. A couple of lads named Red Connors and Idaho Norton. You got me, Malott. Now, let's get back to what happened here. Carrie Deneen tried to plug you. Why? She thought I was a gunman out to get Johnny Kenyon. Wouldn't believe me when I told her I was a friend of his. 
Johnny Kenyon, huh? I had an idea he's working here. He was, but not anymore. Don't happen to know where he's staying, do you, Marshal? At the Longhorn Hotel. No use going there till sundown, though. Kenyon works in the stockyards till sundown. Then he stops for dinner at Maggie Fergal's place. Uh, want me to do anything about Carrie? No, she was hysterical. She fired the miss anyway. Why don't we just forget it? Glad you feel that way about it, Cassidy. You're all right. Tell me something, Malant. Why would anyone want to hurt Johnny Kenyon? There's one of the easiest going men you'll find anywhere. Carrie Deneen seems to like him. And that makes him a lot of ready-made enemies. Because a lot of men like Carrie Deneen. Jealousy. With some people, it's another word for kill. You sure this is the room? Well, the clerk downstairs said it was number 15. And that's what we got. Johnny Kenyon, you old outlaw, you. Didn't expect... Johnny, what's the matter? What happened to you? Hoppy. You, you better come in. You catch him, Hoppy. I've got him. Get the door open a little more. His face. Looks like somebody hit it with a poker. Sees him down on the bed. You better go out and get a doctor. No. Uh, don't get... Don't get anyone. Just take it easy, Johnny. You need a doctor. The window. You see? Winter? What's she worrying about? It? Hoppy! Yeah, I see. The girl from the Silver Dollar. The redhead. She's dead, Hoppy. She's been stabbed. Hoppy, you. You've got to. Get me out of here. How did it happen, Johnny? I don't know. I, I walked into the room. Something hit me. That, that's all I know. Please, get me out of here. You can't run, Johnny. Run from this and you'll carry a label the rest of your life. Kill her. And every man will be against you because it was a woman. I didn't do it. Well, we'll tell them that. But you can't run. you got to stay and face it. California. The doctor? The doctor and the town marshal. And you might as well tell them to bring along the coroner. Right. I'm on the way, Hoppy. I'm... I'm glad you came, Hoppy. I... I'm awful glad you came. Did you know that girl was coming here tonight? Yeah. Carrie and I were in love. We were going to get married next week. She came here so we could plan the wedding. I was a little late getting back from Maggie Fergal's place. I, I shouldn't have been late. If I hadn't oh, been late... Oh, but they'd have found some other way of doing it. Stop beating yourself, Johnny. A lot of men were in love with her. But I was the lucky one. The lucky one. What are you doing, Hoppy? That's her purse. Spilled open when she fell. There's a handkerchief, a sachet, locket, four, eight, twelve, thirteen silver dollars. Yeah. She always carried thirteen dollars. Thought it was good luck. Well, it wasn't good luck tonight. Well, we'll turn this over to the law. Not the sachet, Hoppy. I'd like to have the sachet. The fragrance of it. It'll always seem like her. Put it in your pocket for me. Nobody has to know. Well, I don't... Please, Hoppy. It may be all I'll, I'll ever have to remember, but... If I ever get out of this... You'll get out of it, Johnny, if you're innocent. You believe I'm innocent, don't you? Yes, I do, because I know you. There'll be people in this town who won't believe it. And for a while, that's going to make things pretty tough. <laughs> Here's the marshal, Hoppy. Couldn't find the doctor, though, but we left word for him. Uh, doesn't look as though a doctor's going to do this girl much good. Kenyon needs him. California tell you about this, Malat? Yes, he told me. I'm glad you didn't run, Kenyon. How did it happen? I'll tell you the same thing I told Hoppy. I walked into this room and someone hit me. That's all I know. Why was the girl here? We were going to be married. Next week. She came here so we could talk things over. Sure you didn't have a fight? No. We never fought about anything. We were in love with one another. Okay, kid. I'm just asking what other people are going to ask. Know anybody who'd want to kill her? No. Why would anybody want to do that? Pretty as a picture. Why would anybody want to do that? Well, 
I'm going to have to take you in, kid. Johnny, you worked at the Silver Dollar, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I worked there. Who runs the place? A fellow by the name of Blue Telford. Why? Oh, just a thought. Okay. But don't let your thoughts make you careless. Not when it comes to Blue Telford. He's a winning man on the draw. And that goes for the game of poker or when he's using a gun. I'm Chelford. Bartender says you've been wanting to see me. Yeah, I'm Hopalong Cassidy. This is my partner, California Carlson. Uh, what's your trouble? I'm a friend of Johnny Kenyon. I thought if I could talk to you about Carrie Deneen... Look, friend, I'm not talking about Carrie Deneen to anyone. This could be important. It might save Johnny Kenyon's life. Well, I'll just be frank with you. I don't care a nickel about saving Johnny Kenyon's life. Uh, I can see we're just wasting each other's time. Not at all. If you hadn't come looking for me, I'd have sent for you. That's interesting. Why? Well, I've been kind of anxious to give you a little advice. I think you ought to get out of town. I've only been here a few hours. I haven't had a chance to do much looking around. Well, it's a dusty, dirty town, friend. You wouldn't see much if you did look around. It'll be much healthier for you if you leave. Just the same, Telford, I think I'll stay. Well, that's your choice. But if you're still in Abilene by tomorrow night, you could end up staying a long time. A long, long time. All right, Telford. Now that we understand each other... Help! Everybody down the street! Why, Mr. Telford, you can get them out! Out where? You try to empty this place, Meek, and you better have good reason for it. I have good reason, Mr. Telford. It's a fire for jail with a young fellow in there burning to death. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Memory of Mace Millot. In Abilene, a fire is destroying the city jail. Inside the building, a trapped, helpless prisoner is Johnny Kenyon, Hoppy's friend and old Bar 20 pal. Outside, a big crowd mills about, horrified by the spectacle of a man being burned to death before their eyes. Everybody line up! Let's get those buckets going! A lot! How about Kenyon? We've done everything we can! Door jam shut now is too hot to get close. We can't let him stay in there and die. Here, let me have that bucket of water. Give me three or four lariats and riders. I'll have to have three or four riders. What you gonna do, Hoppy? Get these ropes wet. I'll move in and time to the bars, then we'll pull that wall out. You're crazy. You'll die as well as Kenyon. I'm gonna try to save him anyway. Here are the ropes, boys. I'll keep the open end. How are you gonna work it, Cassidy? When I give the word, pull. Here I go. Watch the horses. Hang all those ropes and he'll never make it. He'll never make it anyway. That building's gonna cave in any second. Poppy! He's still on his feet. I can see him. He ain't gonna make it. That building's going down. He'll make it. Come on, Hoppy. Hold it. We can't hear him. Let it go. There he goes. I heard him. Oh, wait. Give him a chance to get clear. He's clear now. Pull away. How is he, Malat? Doc says he's going to be all right. He's smart enough to lie flat on the floor, and that saved his life. How do you think that jail caught fire? I don't think. I know. Somebody set it off. That fire should prove Kenyon's innocence. Somebody tried to kill him. I won't argue that with you, but... You in here, Malat? Come in, Judge. Judge, this is Hopalong Cassidy. Hello. I've heard of you, Cassidy. What? There's people saying that you're going to take Kenyon out of Abilene because uh, you're worried about his health. He's my prisoner, and it's my duty to protect his welfare. I'm taking him over to Claiborne tomorrow. Not until after the inquest, you won't. Well, that's up to you, Pete, since you're both coroner and judge. Then he stays in town, and we decide how that girl met her death. And if anybody's real worried about Kenyon's health, they better go out and find him a good lawyer. Because he's going to need it. (laughs) 
Out pretty late, aren't you, California? Well, with that fire and all, it was a big night. Uh, might be bigger ones in the next day or so, though. Why do you say that? There's a lot of talk going around. Uh, talk against Blue Telford. Uh, there's them as thinks he'd a hand in the killing of that gal. There's talk about forming vigilantes and running Telford out of town. Uh, with the gang Telford has behind him, that would be quite a job. I heard something else this evening, too. Ran into that little clerk who works at the Longhorn Hotel. Yeah? He's been drinking quite a bit. Uh, had a lot in his mind. Told me some of it. About Johnny Kenyon? Yeah. This little feller's name's Meek. Judd Meek. And he says he knows about somebody who went up to Johnny's room just afore Carrie Deneen was killed. Yeah? Meek says the party didn't know he saw him because he was in a closet stacking blankets at the time. He saw him come out, too, maybe ten minutes later. That was just before we got there. Then we've got it. <laughs> yeah. This should clear Johnny Kenyon. Maybe, if Meek could name this party. Uh, but I couldn't get no more out of him. He's scared, yes, sir. Uh, it's on his conscience, but he's scared clear through to the matter. Where did you talk to him? Over at the Golden Nugget Saloon. He might still be there. Let's go. This place ain't quite as fancy as the Silver Dollar. No music or nothing. Can you spot your man? Yeah, he's all alone at the table. Come on. Um, uh, back again, Meek. I uh, thought I'd like to buy you a little drink. Yeah, Oh, it's you, huh? uh, Yeah, this is my pal, Hoppy. Uh, hello, Hoppy. Hi. Listen, fellas, I can't stay. I gotta go home. I got a wife and kid, and we're leaving town tomorrow, so I gotta go home. Uh, but you got a lot in your mind, Meek. We kind of thought you might like to talk about it. Not so loud. Uh, a lot of my mind? What do you know about what I got on my mind? Well, you know who killed Carrie Deneen. You know who was up to Johnny Kenyon's room just before she got night. Hey, wait a minute. What are you trying to do? Get me in trouble? Who was it you saw go up there, Meek? Hey, go away. I'm going home. I got a wife and a what, kid. What are you going to do, Meek? Keep it in your conscience? You helped me save Johnny Kenyon's life tonight. I saw you working down there at the fire. What are you going to do now? Let him hang anyway? When you know he's innocent. When you know who really committed that murder. I'm going home. We're leaving You've got to morning. tell us, Meek. It'll be on your conscience if you don't. You've got to tell us. Uh, yeah, I guess I do have to tell you, but... I... I have to do it in my own way. You don't need to no, wait. No, 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 wait. I'll, I'll tell you about it, but I'm scared. I've got a wife and kid. i got to think about them, so I'll tell about it in my own way. All right, Meek. What is your own way? Uh, tomorrow morning, we're pulling out of Abilene, me and the family. There's an old trail shack out west of town, maybe ten miles. Yeah. If you want to meet me there tomorrow, I'll tell you everything I saw, and then I won't care. And I figure we can get away, and it'll be off my mind. I can't make it in the morning, Meek. They're holding the inquest then. All right, I'll, I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you until sundown. Let's have order here. This is an inquest, not a carnival. All right, now. Now we'll get back to the business at hand. I have here a list of effects belonging to the deceased. Do we have the items here, Marshal? No, Your Honor. Everything except the money was burned up when the jail caught fire. I wrote the list from memory. Well, we certainly won't question your memory. It seems you had a handkerchief, a locket, and a... Now, any more disturbance like this, I'm going to clear the room. What's going on here, anyway? What's this all about? If you really want to know, Pete, I'll be glad to tell you. You sit down, Maggie Virgo. You're out of order. That's where you're wrong, Judge. Everything about me is working just fine. <laughs> and since when have vigilantes been out of order? Vigilantes? What do you mean? We're formed and ready to act, that's what I mean. We want you and the marshal to act with us. But if you ain't willing, we're going to act anyway. And just what you expect to do that can't be done in court under due process of the law? This happens to be a court, don't it? I don't see Blue Telford in here anywhere. Well, as far as we know, Blue Telford has nothing to do with this case. Pete, as far as we all know, he's got everything to do with it. With everything else that's rotten in this town. Thank you for gold. You're a woman. You shouldn't have any interest in killing. I don't, so long as your fool men can find it to one another. But when you start killing women, that's when I get plumb interested. 
We want Telford at this here and judge. If he don't feel that he wants to come, we feel we ought to go over to the Silver Dollar and get him. Your Honor, may I say something? Why not, Mr. Gessler? Everybody else has. Maggie, if you're all willing to wait until this evening sometime, I think I'm going to be able to tell you who killed Carrie Deneen and provide proof. Well, now, that sounds all right. But how do we know you ain't just talking? I have information that I can't give out to everybody, but I'm willing to tell you all about it. I'll tell you up here in front of the judge and the marshal, and then you can decide for yourself. Sounds fair enough. Well, come up here to the bench then, Maggie. All right. If this is going to be a private conversation, everybody else back. Now make way for Maggie first. Don't worry about me. I'll make my own way. Maggie, you certainly give me a lot of trouble here today. I ought to cite you for contempt. You do, Judge, and you'll never eat another piece of my pie as long as you live. <laughs> All right, now, what's this information? That little clerk at the hotel, he saw a person go up to Johnny Kenyon's room just before the killing. He saw the person leave right after it. He wouldn't tell me who it was. He was afraid. But he's leaving Abilene, and he's going to tell me the name of that person this afternoon when I meet him at the trail shack out west of town. All right, Maggie. Does that satisfy you? Yeah, I'm satisfied. It's okay, everybody. We'll wait and act later. And now, now, if you don't mind, we'll continue this hearing. If I remember correctly, I was reading Marshal Malotte's list of the dead girl's effects. Handkerchief, locket. Silk sachet and 13 silver dollars. Well, it appears that the handkerchief, the locket, and the sachet were destroyed in the jail fire. But, hey, hey, hold on there, Cassidy. Where do you think you are going? Sorry, Your Honor, but I have to leave. I just found out that I put Judd Meek and his family in danger of their lives. <laughs> Only a few more hours now, and we can be on our way. And we won't have nothing to worry about. And then we're heading out to California. What do you say to that, Jesse? Jesse, I'm talking to you. You always were a talker, weren't you, Meek? Mace, my lot. Yeah. Talk so much you don't even think to look if anybody's listening. If you'd have been looking now for an instant, you'd have seen that your wife and kid are walking out by the corral. My wife and kids? Didn't expect to see me, did you? No, Waiting no. For somebody else, weren't you? Hop along, Cassidy. You were going to tell them all about seeing me at the hotel last night. Shotgun. you got a shotgun. I'll bet you told your wife all about it, too, didn't you, Meek? My wife? No, no, no. You couldn't do anything to her, my lot. I'm afraid I'll have to, Meek. If you the talker that you are, I'd be taking too big a chance letting her stay alive. No, no. Should have kept your mouth shut, me. You can't kill us, you... Shut up. Hop along, Cassidy. Thank heaven. I said shut up. One wrong word and... You don't see my nag out back. Maybe we'll have a surprise party for Mr. Cassidy. Meek, you in there, Meek? Answer. Tell him you're here. Uh, I'm here, Mr. Cassidy. And I'm here too, Cassidy. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. You ain't gonna be using this hand for a couple of days, Hoppy. Lucky you only caught the edge of that scattergun blast, or you wouldn't have no arm. Uh, you ought have waited for me to get here anyway. Might have been too late, California. Uh, it would have been too late. My lot was going to kill my wife as well as me. Maybe my kid. Yeah, I can believe that. After all, he killed Carrie Deneen just because he was jealous of her. How's the shoulder, my lot? I'll be all right. If I had half your luck, I'd own the state of Texas. Ah, uh, you made your own luck, my lot. All the way. Another 15 minutes. That was all I needed. You're wrong. I knew you were the killer without me telling me. Sure, you're a big man. You know everything. And just how did you know? You told me. You and that report you wrote of what Carrie Deneen had in her purse. You wrote that list from memory, didn't you, Malat? You'd have been better off if you hadn't. Listen, I've got the best memory in the Southwest. Why would I have been better off? Because what you wrote showed you'd been in the room before I got there. And that would have proved you gilly. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the silk sachet you had on the list. She had a sachet. I know she did. But you couldn't have known it, not unless you were there earlier than I was, because I picked up that sachet before you and California came in. I picked it up and kept it, without saying a word to anybody. Now, let's get back to town. 
I'm anxious to tell Johnny Kenyon he's a free man. It's a funny thing, but justice always seems to triumph over crime, even when the only clue, as Hoppy found in this story, was merely a bag of powdered scent and a memory that was a trifle too keen. In our next adventure, Hoppy and California come face to face with death, but this time not at the point of a gun. It's a tale of greed and mystery, and the fall guy takes the form of a spider woman. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The memory of Mace Millock was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>